Welcome everyone. Welcome everyone. This session is food service with uh, Shauna Smith of um, Upper Crust Food Service Providers. Um, and she's gonna be talking to us today about trends in the food service industry. Shauna, it's all yours. Okay, well, thank you. And Gary and Ed, if you guys have questions as I'm going through through the presentation, feel free to ask. Um, more than happy to do that. And I am going to share my screen here as we get started. Okay. There we go. So we're going to just start this off. Um, I'm going to talk about food service trends and operating adjustments. So really looking back, um, kind of what's been going on, what we've had this last fall, what we're seeing kind of starting in the spring, um, moving forward of what we're gonna see, and then um, supply and labor shortages that we're seeing. So during COVID and, um, you know, you probably heard or seen this if you were, you know, at the fraternity house is, we saw many of the students eating meals by themselves or in their bedrooms. If, you know, during the COVID, they were grabbing their food, whether it was in a to-go box or it was being served to them and either taking it to their bedrooms or, you know, spreading out through the dining room. Um, you had less communal dining. A lot of that was dictated either, you know, through the health department, the house corporation board, um, for some, it was the universities made those uh, determinations if, if you were being like inspected by uh, the university's health department. Um, Self-service dining was eliminated. Um, food was placed into go boxes. It is not the ideal way any of us like to do food or eat out of it, but they were eating out of their to go boxes with plastic forks and spoons. Um, so then we also saw the increased request for comfort foods. So, you know, it was more um, chicken, broccoli, rice, casserole. Can we get more mac and cheese, um, chicken tenders, um, you know, food that, you know, they were not wanting to um, kind of shake up their palate with um, some different foods. We also saw less variety available, and a lot of that came from um, the supply chain. We just could not get some, some food in. Um, we had parts of the country where chicken was readily available and you couldn't get red meat and vice versa. So um, the variety was less. Um, I always use the, you know, sometimes we couldn't get milk. If you had a milk machine, we couldn't get the bladders of milk. So it became, um, you know, the individual milk containers like a school. Um, but the flip side of that was we had a huge increase and still do in snack foods. And I think part of this was, you know, the restaurants, um, some places weren't open, limited hours, you know, they were in their bedrooms and so, or, you know, and really at the house doing their online classes. So we saw more people wanting snack foods, um, you know, whether it was, you know, the individual cookies, chips, popcorn to, hey, can we get the mac and cheese, the easy mac and cheese, frozen burritos, stuff that we can throw in the microwave. Saw a big increase in that. Um, of course, we saw a lower meal plan participation due to a limitation of live-in members. So if you were a house that had to uh, reduce your live-in membership because of allowing spacing, we saw that lower meal plan participation. Also, um, we had some houses and campuses where live-out members weren't allowed in the house. So a house corporation board is depending on that revenue and that has been taken away. Um, because they could not come in. Um, I had some campuses that were creative. Um, they had a table outside the kitchen back door and that was where they came and food was put into go boxes and you had to be there. You know, if lunch was normally 11 to one, you had to pick up your box at 12 
And that was, you know, it was out there. Um, worked for some and House, House Corporation Board was able to continue charging, um, but most of them did not. Um, we also saw an, saw an increased cost um, to House Corporation Boards and chapters on disposables, styrofoam, um, paper, all of that um, increased dramatically. Of course, the online classes, um, mask mandates in the kitchen, common spaces of the house, et cetera. Um, and then Zoom, we all had to jump to this technology. I'm kind of amazed that we weren't doing this prior to this, but we, for the most part, have gotten pretty good on this. So what we saw this fall when we came back is there is still a transition um, of getting men and women back into the dining room to enjoy that brotherhood that they do during a meal. So we still saw them asking for more to-go boxes because they really kind of wanted to go back to their room. Um, and that is one that I think we are still going to see that that's, you know, kind of the dining rooms reopened, still getting that um, where, you know, I think too, we're all dealing with, um, you know, if you tend to have sophomores living in your house, you know, they really as freshmen didn't get to know each other all that well, and now we've put them together. And we're saying, you know, get to know your brothers, eat together, etc. And they're still, um, you know, trying to make that adjustment um, of their social skills. Um, once again, increase in weekend meal requests now. Um, so we had the increase in just more snacks, but this fall we had people saying, hey, we don't want the chef in the house, but we want food available. And so we had quite a few of our houses that we do a weekend meal plan and it's really for the in-house men. And we see this really more on the men's side than the women, but they want, um, and they work with the chef so they can change it each weekend. But they'll say, hey, we want a bunch of shredded cheese, shredded chicken, tortillas, and we're gonna make the ability to make our own quesadillas. Um, we want, you know, sliced meats, cheeses, lettuce, breads, so that we have kind of a sandwich bar that's available throughout the weekend. Um, also, you know, the burritos, the mac and cheese, soup, anything that can be cooked in the microwave, we have seen that happening, um, which from our standpoint, you know, is not a problem. Um, it's just that you need to get everybody living in the house on that plan and agreeing to it. Um, also the same with an increase in new snack plans. They're just wanting heavier snacks. You know, our normal plan always is gonna have breads, peanut butter and jelly, honey, bagels, cream, cheese, whole fruit. And we're seeing those groups really wanting that additional piece. Um, and it's what we used to be able to do is put the leftovers, you know, in that common refrigerator, that type of thing. And then, you know, as COVID, we were having to put them in individual boxes. And some have now said, hey, we just don't even, you can't do that anymore. And so the chapters are asking, hey, we don't get leftovers anymore. And so the meal requests or the additional snack plans are kind of supplementing in that. Um, majority of our campuses, chapters were eliminating the mask mandate. Um, we saw staffing shortages. Um, really still, we thought once the government um, additional funds for unemployment went away, that we'd start, we saw a little bit of a peak, but then the staff shortage, you know, available staff dropped and um, you know, everybody, and you, you see it in a grocery store, you see it, you know, any place you go, a restaurant, everybody's looking to hire. Um, my little sp speed mart that it's a little gas station for a cashier, they were starting at $15 an hour with a thousand dollar signing bonus. I was like, this, this is a cashier. It, you know, it's not even a full-time job here. But seeing that, and then 
more supply chain issues. You know, I think everybody's, what you were hearing is fall of 21, everything's going to be back to normal. And there was a lot of um, businesses thinking, oh, my shelves will fill back up in the grocery store, et cetera. And that did not happen. So we saw more um, supply chain issues. So as we came into spring, I think everybody, you know, thought, okay, they're going to go home at Christmas. This is going to be great. We're going to come back and spring semester is going to be more normal than fall. But then the Omicron variant, um, you know, starts out and is starting to, you know, shape our safety trends again. We saw a delay start on some campuses. Um, some of them didn't start until you know, the 2nd of February that normally would have come back um, mid-January. Previous restrictions returned on a campus-to-campus -campus basis. You know, to-go to -go boxes were starting to increase, which then, you know, created a cost increase. Um, snack plans still a high priority. Um, and we did, the positive is we did see students increasing their crave requests on our app. They'd come back from home cooking. They might have been home for a longer period of time, um, but we saw them coming back requesting food again. Um, supply labor sh shortages still continue to this day. <laughs> but moving forward, um, what we are seeing is that new student and the returning college students are looking forward to the college experience. Um, for most of the um, college campuses in the South, they had some of their highest freshman numbers. People wanted to come back to school. Um, big recruitment numbers where other parts of the country we have seen contraction happening in Greek life, whether it's you know, part of it's with the birth rates, some of it's with abolish, abolish Greek life, but the South had some of their highest numbers um, going through fall recruitment and large freshman classes. People want back. I think, you know, those campuses when they said in the fall or summer, hey, we're opening up college football and um, there'll be no masks and we're putting the stadiums back to full capacity. Those kids were like, I'm getting that college experience that I did not have last year. Um, and that student engagement is, you know, all with that experience. Um, we do know that students who live and dine on campuses or in fraternity sorority houses are more, more likely to stay enrolled and graduate. Um, some of the trending flavors that we got were Mediterranean, Middle Eastern, Latin America. Um, you know, a Taco Tuesday um, is still one of the highest requested meals on a college campus. Um, but we also got um, a lot more, we're seeing more requests for healthier food choices. So they wanted that comfort food at the beginning but now they're wanting healthier choices. And part of that is them coming back into, um, you know, A, a lot of people just stayed in a room or, or they stayed home because everything was online. And so now that they're back, you know, they're back into that lifestyle of more, um, more mobile, et cetera. And they're wanting some healthier food choices. And, you know, we still have to be flexible because things are continually changing at this point. So what we're seeing in the labor market, and there is um, the US food service job market has over a million jobs on pre-pandemic levels. Um, restaurant workers, many of them where we pull from our industry, felt burned out during the pandemic, lost their jobs, and they have moved into other fields. Um, you know, they've gone into banking. They've, you know, done other jobs that are stable. Um, they have, you know, saw people that um, did not lose their job or shifted, you know, to a remote job and were able to keep that. So 
we are seeing fewer people going into that or coming back to that field. Um, you know, uh, the strategy shifted from not only marketing to potential customers, but you know, we're marketing to potential chefs and cooks. Um, excuse me, one say, second. Sure. Well, I wanted to give you a two minute warning. Okay. For the so, end of the session. Thank you. Um, part of what we do is the competitive pay, work balance, et cetera. Um, we're seeing the job market getting better each semester. So that is a positive for us. Just on the supply chain, what we're seeing is we work with um, our broadline distribu distributors for pre-allocated products. Um, we set up second and third level vendors during this pandemic. Um, and so our procurement manager has stayed ahead of all of, with, all of that with substitutions, et cetera. Um, you know, we're seeing an increase in fees and prices because demand is strong and supply is scarier. Um, I think what's interested, and I was just gonna share, we get a weekly procure, procurement newsletter internally. So products that have decreased production have been a lot of the single serve jellies, peanut butter and syrups. Um, eggs are on a limited supply right now. Disposable items, foam paper, um, you're seeing like the state of New York, some other places have banned foam effective, you know, January one. So paper is a much higher cost than the foam products. Cream of mushroom soup is a really hard thing to get right now, along with cake mixes. And if you were looking for wings, um, chicken tenders or nuggets, it's another product that's uh, very limited. So you know, we still are staying ahead of it. Um, one of the things we just tell our um, students is, you know, it may say chicken for Thursday night, but if the chicken did not come in on the truck on Wednesday or Monday, you know, you just gotta be flexible here because we're gonna substitute it with another protein. So um, that is what I have. Um, my information is here, it's in the, um, on the forms. I'll be in the vendor booth. So if anybody has any specific questions, feel free to email me, come by the vendor booth. Um, you know, we just, we appreciate our business with Phi Gamma Delta and are here to help um, in any way we can. And boy, does 20 minutes go fast. Sure does. Thank you so much. <laughs> Brothers, we're, we're short on time, and I would I would echo uh, what she said about joining her booth if you have questions, um, because we, we've run out of time. So, hey, thanks brother, for attending the session, brother. There's about five minutes built in, so the, the next table topic, which you can use your program to, to go to other topics, uh, will begin at 1:35. If you want to stick around and, and talk to Shannon for a minute, I'm sure she'd be willing. <laughs>